I thought it was interesting that Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Over and over again, Pilate not once, but many times, several times said, I find no fault with him. There is nothing to accuse him of. And when they kept saying, crucify him, crucify him, he said, well, take him and crucify him, but I want you to know I can't find any accusation against him. I can't find anything wrong with him. Now that was done because in the Old Testament, when they brought a lamb for sacrifice, when they brought a, a lamb for the sacrificial offering, the priest was to examine, see, they were supposed to bring a lamb without blemish. And the lamb had to be perfect. And, uh, you know, when they brought a lamb for sacrifice for sins, the priest didn't examine the person bringing it, they examined the lamb. And the lamb had to be perfect. And so all this happened to Jesus to show that He was perfect. No one could bring accusation against Him. No one can find fault with Him. And even Judas who betrayed Him, if you read the other Gospels, you find that Judas, after he betrayed Jesus, was overcome with remorse. Judas, who the Scripture said Satan filled his heart, if you remember that, Satan filled his heart and then he betrayed Jesus and then he came back to the chief priest later and threw the money on the floor of the temple and he said, I have betrayed innocent blood. So here's this man full of Satan who says, I, I have betrayed innocent blood. Even the devil himself could not bring accusations against Jesus. So we have a perfect offering, a perfect sacrifice with whom is no fault and no blemish and no flaw. All of those things are done in the Old Testament to show us uh, a clue or a hint or a foreshadowing of what was going to take place. Now I'd like to uh, go for just a moment and talk about uh, what was being accomplished by God. What on the spiritual side of things was being accomplished. Elliot, would you give me 1 Peter 2.24? Peter writes about it in a very famous verse. We use this uh, sometimes uh, to talk about the healing that's mentioned at the end by whose stripes were healed. But look at how it starts. Peter says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now Peter tells us, just in a nutshell, the first way of looking at it, or the, the primer, or the fundamental fact about the crucifixion of Jesus and His death, His own self, Jesus in His own self, He bore our sins in His own body on the tree. That's the thing that nobody could see. Nobody standing there could see that He was bearing our sins, but nevertheless, that's what He was doing. That's what God was accomplishing. That's what was going on in the hidden realm, in the spiritual realm, what God was doing. He was laying all of our sins on Jesus and He was paying in all of that suffering and all of that agony and all of that death, paying for our sins. If we could, uh, since we're back at the back of the Bible here, look at Hebrews chapter 9 for just a moment. I just want to focus on some Scriptures that talk about His death and what was actually accomplished. You'll notice that Jesus in John's Gospel, just before He gave up the ghost, just before He died, He said, It is finished. Uh, other translations sometimes say uh, it, is, it, was, it is accomplished or everything is finished or everything is accomplished. Uh, something was accomplished in that death. Notice what it says here in Hebrews chapter 9 beginning with verse 24. Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that He should offer Himself often as the high priest entered into the holiest place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once, in the end of the world, hath he appeared, listen to this now, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now Peter said he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Well, what does that really mean? Well, here's another way of saying it. The writer to the Hebrews says, uh, he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, the sacrifice of Himself was when He sacrificed, of course, Himself on the cross. It was a sacrificial death, not an ordinary death. It wasn't just the death of one man. I was reading a book one time. Um, the author said, now this is, I'm quoting now from this author of the book. He said, he was commenting on the fact that Paul seems obsessed with the cross. And Paul talks a lot about the cross. And this author criticizing the Apostle Paul. This, to me, this is the height of arrogance, a writer to sit down and to dare to criticize Paul the Apostle. And he said, I failed to see what the death of one man 2,000 years ago has to do with me today. This is supposedly a theologian, by the way. He said, I failed to see how the death of one man... Well, see, if you, if you see it as the death of one man, then that you could say, how, what does that have to do with me? But from God's point of view, it was not just the death of one man. He was a sacrificial offering. Peter said he bore our sins in his body on the tree. The writer to the Hebrews, explaining it a little further, said he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, 
Whatever you imagine that it means when it says He put away sin by the sacrifice of Himself, it has to mean something. He did something with sin. You know, sometimes uh, we, in our, in, in sort of our, we have a kind of a lingo, Christians do, kind of a Christian lingo, and we speak in sort of Christian terminology. And sometimes we'll say to somebody, or sometimes a preacher will say, somebody's not doing what we think they should do, or doing some things wrong, or some things that maybe are obviously wrong. You need to put away sin. You know, we'll tell people that sometimes. But really, that expression is not used in terms of a, you and me putting away sin, but what it says is in terms of putting away sin. What we mean by that when we say that to someone, or if someone says it, it means you need to, to get this, get rid of this uh, mess that, that you're participating in. But you see, what it says here is that Jesus put away sin by the sacrifice of Himself. Jesus put it away. As far as God's concerned, now it's true, you know. What we should say is, because you're a Christian, you should walk in the light of what Jesus has done, and not do things. So you have a choice of what, and not do things that are wrong because it's uh, because it's it's compatible with who you are as a Christian. But you, see, what we we should say true to the Scripture: say Jesus put away sin. See, when we tell people they need to put it away, we put a burden on them that they can't really accomplish. See, it's too big for me. If if we could do it, then God would have had us do it and save Jesus all this suffering. Does that make sense to you? If we could do it, all he had to say was, y'all better, y'all better do it. But see, we're told in Hebrews, <laughs> that's speaking, if he were speaking in Oklahoma dialect, y'all better do it. <laughs> he hath appeared. Notice it says, he hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So evidently, from God's point of view, Jesus has put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, let me just stop before we, I've got more to read to you, but. Why am I telling you these things? Or, why is this in the Bible? Why is this in the Bible for us to read? Well, evidently, if we believe that the Holy Spirit motivated these writers, which I believe that's true, if we believe that the Holy Spirit, prompted by God the Father, motivated the writer to the Hebrews to write this, I have to believe that the writer to the Hebrews, motivated by the Holy Spirit, motivated by God Himself, wants me to know this. I have to believe that He wants me to know that Jesus put away my sin. You know why I think He wants me to know that? He doesn't want me to feel guilt. He wants me to believe in that. He wants me to see that Jesus has done something for me. See, what we're supposed to do with what's in the Bible is believe in it and trust in it. And you know, what does that do to a person when they believe... If I believe, for instance, that Jesus put away my sin, if I believe that, what it prompts in me is a, uh, a feeling of gratitude and thankfulness and a desire to walk in the light of what He's done for me because He paid a great price uh, to put away my sin. And so it makes me want to say, ooh, thank you for that. I am so great. You did something for me I could never do for myself. And I just want to walk in thankfulness and, you know, not that I want to try to go ahead and do it for myself, but I see that He's done it for me. 